So to build on that really simple way of kind of breaking down the Erwin Hauer example, let's build a kind of simple conceptual test case as we kind of move into this and add complexity. So what I'd like to do, given that the diagram that I just drew, let's start with just four simple points in Rhino. And I'm intentionally going to skew them off a little bit so that it's clearly it's not uh, they don't they're not at right angles and it's not a square shape so let's grab those four points and so we'll start let me drop in the binoculars we'll start with some point containers and let's see let's set multiple points and I'll just keep a running panel here that I can continue to plug in to check things so we've got four reference points 0 to 3 what I like to do with that with an understanding that I'll take I'll have geometry whether that's a surface or something else in the future but I'll have those four corner points as vertices. So let's draw a polyline between these. And we do want this to be closed, so I can set this to true. And let's take the four vertices, we'll see if this works, and it does. So it just, it took those, it makes a clear kind of thing. And this, while this will seem a little redundant to start, Again, I'm, I'm thinking that what I want to do is grab to basically deconstruct surfaces in a more complex scenario and take their edges or take their vertices and then be able to work with this. So after I have my polyline, let's explode the polyline so that we get the four individual lines. And granted, we could draw four individual lines from each of these points, but the polyline is an easy way to do that. We can explode it. And this will give us four curves that come out of that. And so with these four curves, what I can do is to uh, individually access those four curves by using a list item. And so with list item, this is a way that I've, that I've learned to really like how to do this. I'm gonna bring in the list of points, but rather than providing an index, what I can do is to have four outputs from this. So now I can access those four lines separately. And so if we look at this, We'll see that we get one line from there, one line from there. And so maybe just as a way to be able to understand these, I'm going to create four curve containers and just plug these in one, two, three, and four. Now you can see as I click on them, Here's the first one, second one, third, and fourth. So I have four lines. These, this is flat, because I just drew it in the perspective view in Rhino, where the C plane is the same. If I want, what I'll do in a, with the next tutorial is, is change them so that it's no longer flat, and we'll start to see what happens as these move in space, but for now, We'll just start with a very simple proof of concept of having these four lines. So as we go from here, let's even just, um, let's introduce the, the curve with tangency. And for that, maybe I'm gonna use two, I'll use the first and second line. And maybe what I want to do is to get the endpoints, and I can draw a diagonal between these. And so let's get the endpoints. And what 
actually say for the first and second. And we'll come back and, and so much of this building, this element is having to do things four times. But let's just, I like to use the point containers as they come out so I can clarify. So we do want the first of this line and probably the, or the start and we want the end of the other line. And that looks good. And now, now let's make a line with endpoints using these two. So we have a diagonal. And again, just as a proof of concept, what I'll do is I want to draw a tangent curve maybe between these three midpoints. It's not exactly what we need for the Hauer tutorial, but I want to give you a sense of the inputs that you're going to need for that tangent curve. And we can even place it over here knowing that that's where we're working to. So we need vertices and we need tangents. So the other tool that I'll use to, to break these down is evaluate curve. And while we can get midpoint for a curve, it won't necessarily give us its tangency. So let's take our three curves, which are these, and we'll make three evaluate curves. And let's evaluate the first one, the second one, and the third one. And let's make, well, let's even make a slider so we can just test, so we can see exactly what this looks like. Let's go from point two is less than point eight as a simple slider. We'll set this to be 0.5 to start, and we'll plug this in for the parameter for all three. And it looks like nothing's happened, but there is actually a point on this line. If we move it, we can see it only moves a little bit. It defaults to that being a dimension, when in reality what we want that to be is between 0 and 1 along its full length. And in order to do that, we need to reparameterize the curve. And that basically just allows the component to understand that we're looking at that curve and reparameterizing re it allows us to go from zero to one. And so now we can see these points moving from 0.2 to 0.8. And again, we'll start with 0.5. What comes out of this then is the point and the tangent. So if we plug these in, point, hold down shift, that was cap lock, not shift. So the first one, holding down shift, the second one, and the third one, and then pulling the tangent out of each of these. It turns, gives us an error because it's looking for three and three. So once we provide all three, that should give us something here. Now, what happened? It's producing something, but the third point, the tangent is in the opposite direction than maybe what we would want it to be. So what we can do is we can reverse the vector and we can replace that. Let's remove this one first and then add this one back in. So now we can see we've got a line here, a line here, and a line here. And we have that curve, our tangent curve, starting at this point, moving tangent along that line until it veers off. It hits this line. As it approaches this point, it's tangent. It leaves being tangent and then arrives at this point as tangent. So there's a couple of options with this. We can blend and we can leave degree. Degree as a third degree curve seems appropriate, but let's look at blend where it's 0.5. And this means it's basically equal, equal. So I think we can say zero is less than 1.00. Let's plug this into the blend and see how it changes. So this is zero as we approach 0.5. 
it's going to be kind of equal. And as we increase beyond that, we see it gets more extreme. So it's, it's not necessarily the same 0 to 1 along the curve length, but it's basically the power of this. So I think if we even go, if we increase this to say 5 as its maximum, we can increase the amount of tangency from that point, right? and it'll get pretty extreme. And so what we see is it staying tangent until it gets to a point. It comes around and approaches its tangency there and comes around and goes back. So it's not unlike the curve that we, the final curve that we want, although we want a little more, actually we want a lot more control over this. And so you can see zero is no tangency. 0.5 seems appropriate. And as we get beyond 0.5, it might be too much. So we may come back and change later if we want to increase that or decrease it. But we can see something between maybe 0.3, but 5 being the default. So we have that level of control, and now we understand a little bit of what happens with a tangent curve. So let's this might be a good time to stop, and I can just treat this as the a tangency curve and how that works. But what we'll do with the next step is be a little more specific in terms of breaking down our geometry with our parameters to build up what we're going to need as the kind of underlying sub-framework for the, for the Hauer um, component that we're going to build. So I'll pause here and we'll start up again.